So like they'll, they'll join like as we speak? Yeah, so we're broadcasting live now from Tucson, Arizona, and we're just waiting for a few people to join. And we've got five people, six. So we're in Tucson, Arizona at Arizona K-12 Center's Tech Camp. And it's a beautiful day here, hot, but we're in the shade. So um, uh, Myron Dueck hmm. <laughs> is about to give our opening keynote. And so I brought him outside here just to give us a preview and to tell us about his book. Uh, this is Myron. Hey, everybody. Uh, so, Tony, do you ask me questions or I just talk? Yeah, well, well, tell a little bit about you so we know. Well, I'm Myron Duick. I'm, uh, what are all my hats that I wear right now? I'm currently uh, vice principal at here in the United States and, and all over, actually. Um, and I'm a dad, a husband, um, mountain biker, and a bunch of other things. So, uh, super excited to uh, be at the K-12. That's awesome. We have 125 teachers that are spending a week here at Tech Camp. Okay. And you get to kick it off. Um, what's what's your main message for the teachers in the audience? In a nutshell, my message today is let's open the portal to creativity. Let's allow people to recognize it in the classroom and once recognizing it, look at ways of assessing it. Because I find that one of the number one things that impedes teachers where they go, oh my, oh my goodness, another creative venture, is the the feeling they have of the inability to assess it. That's why they go back to the old binder, to the cookie cutter assignments that somebody passed on generation after generation, and they just, because they don't, they feel helpless to assess these things. Yeah. So that's the main message. Um, and yeah, and, and creativity brings a little bit of chaos. It brings a little bit of uncertainty. It, it's, it's not the way we've always done things, but I'm going to try to make the case in here through a few examples that that is the direction our world is heading in inquiry, investigation, all those things are going to be paramount. So we got to get on board. And yeah. uh, this might be a first step for some people or certainly a continuation for others. Yeah, you're getting lots of hearts on Periscope. People are liking what nice. you're saying. So there are 18 people watching now and somebody, uh, Sherry says, organized chaos is creativity with three exclamation marks. It is, <laughs> it is. And you know, it, it's, this is another message that I have for today. It actually doesn't matter if you necessarily pull off the creative venture. You're sending a message to your students by attempting it. And that is as important a message as anything because I'm going to show a boy in this presentation today who's making an awful lot of money on a creative venture he did besides school. He would go to school, go through the motions, etc. Then he would go home and be creative and it is unbelievable what he's pulling off. And there, his message to teachers will be, give kids like me a little bit of room. Give me the chance to, to do that exploration, to do that creativity piece. And like I said, the medium is the message here. Try something in your classroom. Make yourself vulnerable. And your students are gonna sit back and go, whoa, Miss Smith is trying something here that's actually pretty cool. It didn't go so well today, but the message is let's try something. Yeah. Um, so there's a question, aren't you really hot in that outfit right now? Hot as in temperature? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, in the shade, it it's is, a dry heat, you know, like well, they say. The misnomer here is, and I want people to know this, I think three days ago, the Canadian, the North American hotspot was British Columbia, a little place called, uh, um, where was it? Soyuz, British Columbia, North American hotspot. So no, we are not knee deep in snow in Canada right now. It's very close to this temperature where I live. And, uh, but not quite the humidity. Um, hot? No, not too bad, actually. We're in the shade. Tony picked the shade. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. We stepped outside. In, in a moment, we'll go inside so I can show them the cover of your book and sure. they, can, they can see where you're about to take stage. And I know what you guys are going to ask. I'm not periscoping this whole presentation, uh, mostly because I don't want to hold my phone the whole time. I want to <laughs> take notes and I want, want to enjoy it. Um, but uh, if can you tell us how they can find you online? What, what's your Twitter and, and uh, where? Twitter is at uh, Myron Duick, uh, M Y R O N D U E C K. You can find me at MyronDuick.com. You can see a number of videos through ASCD, either YouTube it, uh, YouTube Grading Smarter Not Harder. You can go to my website and go click on the book and see links as well to where I talk about my kid brushing his teeth and other crazy stories and how they link to what we do in the classroom. And uh, 
Yeah, like I said, a huge thank you to the people out there who've made Grading Smarter Not Harder an ASCD bestseller. I am continually shocked at how well it's done. i just surprised they publish it, let alone mm -hmm. people buying it. So, Do you um, have plans for a follow-up? Uh, yeah, I might have been working on that on the plane yesterday. <laughs> Writing a book is hard. It is, and you try to be a dad at the same time, but my family's been super gracious. My prime writing time is 5 a.m. till noon on Sundays, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you try to pull it off. So. Yeah, yeah, they're seeing great books. So some people who are tuned in have the book. Oh, wonderful! I, you know, I tried writing it. I tried writing it different than other educational books. Not that I got anything wrong with them, but I wanted people to be able to pick this up and just hear kind of the straight goods from somebody who tried some things. I want people to have a laugh. Uh, a couple of people have commented it's one of the first education books they found funny. Um, I can't present or write any other way. Uh -huh. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like I said, it's exciting, and yeah, there there'll likely be another one. Ah, good, good. But don't tell anyone. Do you talk about badges at all? And there's a question in there about um, like I, that's a no in front of the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hand out a lot of badges. It's not a, it's not a security <laughs> depot. Yeah, no. <laughs> what, ask the person what do they mean by badges? Uh, so I, I think and they can they can say here too. But um, kind of uh, gamifying the classroom and having oh, yeah. classroom badges for learning achievements. Um, I myself haven't done a lot of that, but, but lots of games, lots of competition type things that are fun. I'm going to show today, uh, and I write about it in the book, um, scavenger hunt that a chemistry teacher does at, as a test review. You know, send out four kids, one phone each, like a camera, go around the school and take a picture of every review term from our test. Yeah, go try and find a picture of hypothesis. Right? Uh -huh. So these, these teams go out around the school and they're taking pictures, but you only get the points if nobody else has the same picture. So there's incredible competition. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I love that idea. Oh, yeah. The kids come back laughing. The teacher shows the things up on the board and it is fun. The winning team gets the iced tea and, and maybe people realize on their way home that day, hey, I think we just did a test review. Right, and that was uh -huh. way too much fun. As uh, something that Ben Arcuri is doing, um, you'll find him on Twitter, also Ben Arcuri. You'll see he's got all kinds of cool things he's doing in his chemistry classroom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just, anyway, I'm gonna blast people with examples today of, of things they can pull off creatively, creatively in the classroom. So if you guys are on Twitter, um, our hashtag for Tech Camp is uh, AZ K12, and we know we're gonna have a lot of people live tweeting what Myron's about to tell us, and there'll be some great links. I'm gonna to try to tweet in there too, so tune into the hashtag. Awesome. Now he's got a presentation to turn around and then say say hi um, and give Myron some hearts. Hey. Uh, thanks for taking time to, to talk oh, so to me. Nice. Yeah, isn't that? Isn't that oh, neat? look so, at the hearts show up. Yeah, and then the, the the more the different people are different colors, and then they just kind of stream up. Wow, there. It makes it. Thanks, guys. That that's that's it. awesome. I and I huge appreciation here for Tony and Sarah and a bunch of other people trying to pull this thing off. Well, not trying, obviously pulling it <laughs> off. Uh, 120. By the way, this is a first for me, Tony, to to see 125 people show up for a week of Pro oh. D. Yeah. That allows them to investigate. I only imagine when these people go back to their classrooms, they can they can email and tweet each other, going, "Hey, how's that working?" Yeah. Like I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. You guys are onto something brilliant. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna do some periscopes probably with Sarah, and we're gonna talk about the professional development we do here for a week. Yeah. It's really unique, and I think we're really onto something. It's our tenth year doing it, oh, so clearly obviously, a success. yeah, it is. It is. So awesome. well, let's just walk inside, right. and I just want to open, and then uh, they can see that your your fans are waiting for you. Oh, air conditioning. This feels oh, a lot man. better. So uh, <laughs> it's grading smarter, not harder. And in case you want to know how to spell Myron's name, there it is. Feel free to take a screenshot. Oh, you got even more fans. Uh, the Twitter handle is just at and then his first and last name. And if you go to my Twitter page, you'll see that I uh, mentioned him in my last tweet. All right, we'll see you guys later.